had teammates who were 17 and I was 24 at the time when I came back. When I graduated, I was 26 and like some of them were still, you know, like freshmen, 18. So it's like just sitting in the locker room having conversations. I'm listening to those guys that they talk about a girl or something. And I'm just like, I'm married. I'm like way, way past that. <laughs> After years of sitting on the sidelines and being reminded every single day that he had a heart condition and couldn't play, YY was given the news that he never in a million years thought he would hear. He could play again. You have lived four years of like the constant reminders with the medication every single morning waking up you tell yourself, okay, I have a heart condition, I have to be careful. And then in one split moment, they tell you, actually, no, you're fine. Were you able to believe that? I'm sure going through so many 20 plus doctors telling you various different things, was it, were you kind of nervous to believe such good news? Uh, yes, I was, uh, to be honest. And I actually had like I, I had follow-up appointments with like three, I got like three more opinions after that. Yo, yeah. Like double check. Are you sure I'm okay? <laughs> right. And obviously I had to get cleared by school as well. Um, but yeah, I wasn't really sure. And to be honest, like they gave me the diagnosis, like they gave me the, rec I mean, they basically told me you're fine. But in my head, I was like, well, I'm fine, but I don't, I still don't feel fine. You know, like, I still have these episodes, like, yeah, they're not as severe as, like, when I first came in the hospital, but, you know, from that moment when they told me, okay, you don't have a, con a heart condition, up, and like, for the next, like, three, four months, I was horizontal on the couch, because my, con my I guess, like, they, they put me on, like, some meds um, to help, you know, calm me down and everything, but even with the meds, I couldn't sit up. Uh, every time I sat up, my heart rate would shoot up, and like you know, my my I was start getting like my pressure in my head and heart palpitations, and I have to like lay back down to be like calm again. And so for the next like literally three months, I was like at home in Pennsylvania and just like horizontal. Um, so even though I had that great diagnosis, I was like, well, what's <laughs> going on? Like I I mean I still don't feel fine, but everybody would kept saying I was fine. And so I just knew it was a matter of time. I just had to get through it. And, you know, slowly and steadily, I kept improving day by day. Um, you know, it got to a point where I could walk around in the house, like walk upstairs, and then like I'll get start getting the episodes and then I'll have to lay, lay back down and then get up and walk and then lay down and walk and lay down. And then I just kept like building on from there. To be honest, I can't quite remember like one day when I just felt better. It just happened over time. It's just like, like I said earlier, every day I just kept getting better and better, just like little by little. It was frustrating, but you know, I ended up taking like three and a half months or four months for me to like feel somewhat normal that I can go around and walk around and not have those symptoms as much anymore. Like, I mean, I still would have them, but not enough to hinder me from walking around. Wow. That must have been so confusing. Like, did you ever get answers of what was going on? Like I said earlier, I think it might have been mental based on what they said. Just like the whole, okay, my dad died of a heart attack and he died. Oh, I, I didn't mention that. So my dad died after going out for a run. So I remember he went out for a run um, the day before and like fell on his run. And so he came back and he had dirt like all over his clothes. And I remember making fun of him. And I'm like, dude, like, you just went for a run and fell? Like, what's going on? Can you not see? Can you not walk? Like, what's going on? And he just, like, laughed it off. The next day, I went for a run again and fell and came back. Again, I made fun of him. I'm like, wow, there's just, there must be something going on with you because I guess, like, you can't, I mean, you can't move anymore or something. I'm like, you need to quit, quit running or something. And then the following day was when he woke up and had, like, you know, couldn't move basically. And then my mom had to take him to the hospital and that's when we found out and like, you know, everything just went downhill from there. So that's how it happened. And so for me, every day, every time my heart rate goes up, I think about that. Um, and so for me, you know, like even after I was told that I was fine, every time my heart rate will go up, I still, you know, it's, it was hard for me to overcome that. 
um, and just like tell myself or convince myself that I'm okay and I can keep going and I can keep pushing. Um, so yeah, that's that took a while. Um, and to be honest, I don't think right now I'm completely 100% like over it. Um, I, I still think that it affects me every now and then, but for the most part, you know, I'm good. I'm grateful, and you know, um, I can live my life. Um, yeah, I can live my life now. You did ultimately get to play again. That's like the biggest, the biggest part. So, how did that process work? I know. I mean, you ultimately got better, but. At what moment were you like, I could go back and play? Or did you have to ask someone like, hey, do I have eligibility? Like, I know it's a long shot, but like, can I play? <laughs> you know, it's funny because when uh, after I got discharged from the hospital and I went home, first thing, you know, my my host dad as a as a, as a high school basketball coach, that's the first thing he says. is like, do you have any eligibility left? Like, it started out as a joke, right? But um uh, earlier when I talked about coming to, to, to American and like, you know, just Coach Brennan and everybody in the atmosphere that was there, it was just like a great group of guys, a great group of people that actually cared for you and looked out for you. And so for me, when, you know, when I found, when I found out that I didn't really have a heart condition, like Coach Brennan and all the, co- the coaching staff and actually the team were aware of like everything that was going on. And so they were checking in on me periodically, not because they wanted to, you know, me to come back and play again but just because they wanted to see how i was doing um you know i was helping out with the team still after i graduate graduated like um, helping the guys at practice and um you know just involved with the team so coach brennan knew what was going on and so when he when i found out i didn't have a heart condition i obviously told him and so he's like you know um, and then, and, and back then when I was going to all those doctor's appointments, um, from like 2014 to 2017, Coach Brennan came to a bunch of those appointments with me. Um, he just came in and sat down, even though he knew I wasn't going to be able to play again, he just showed up and sat there with me in my doctor's, uh, doctor's appointments, which was, which was really great, um, that he, that he did that. Um, and so, yeah, so all the coaching staff, they were, they were involved, they knew what was going on. And so when I, first, when I came back to D.C., when I felt better and came back to D.C., um, you know, that's when they, they were like, oh, um, I was sitting down with Coach Brennan. He's like, I know it's a long shot, you know, it's a long shot, but like, have you considered what you're going to do? Like, do you think you want to play? Like, wh- what are you thinking? I'm like, well, if it's possible for me to play, I'd love to play. I'd love a second chance. I'd love to, you know, actually have like, play basketball yeah um he's like all right well we're going to talk to our compliance uh, director and see what we can do and so andrew smith is his name we met with him and he he said you know it's a long shot but we're gonna we're gonna do everything we can we're gonna file all this paperwork and see what we can do and so that's what we did we filed uh paperwork to extend my clock so that was so that i would have been in my fifth year right so that was the summer the spring of uh 2018 and um, um, yeah, so I, I enrolled in 2013. Spring of 2018 would have been my fifth and technically final year of eligibility. So he filed to extend my clock. And, you know, it was a long shot. We didn't think it was going to happen. But then I remember we asked for one year and he, I had to write a statement. We had to get the athletic director to sign a bunch of things. And so we sent it into the NCAA. And so they reached out and they were like, well, we see that he missed three and a half years of competition. And you guys are asking for one year, but we are going to give him two years if he, if he wants that. What? Right, so that's- You're like, I'm taking every minute I can get. <laughs> I remember, um, you know, the, I found out about it. So that was, the, that was a bigger reaction from my teammates because they had no idea. They just knew that I applied. And so we were in the locker room and Coach Brendan and I still was like, oh, yeah, I don't know if you guys heard, but like, you know, why was coming back next year? And everybody just went crazy. And so that, that, that was fun. Did you ever think that that day would come? Like when you look back to 2013, like did you ever think the day would come that you would get to step out on the court again for real? Not at all. Like I said, you know, me getting that tip on senior night in 2017, I thought that, you know, chapter was closed, basketball is a done deal, I'm done, I need to move on. And then, you know, that moment, everything. And so just my mentality coming back and playing again was all, I'm just grateful for this moment. 
I'm just gonna, you know, I don't really care about anything else. I just want to practice, like practices, you know, they can get long and, you know, sometimes and stressful and hard on your body. Like my body broke down so many times the first year because I've been out for so long, but I still enjoyed every single minute of it. Like I was always looking forward to practice. Like I just wanted to go out there and just have fun and run around like, and not really worry about, you know, my my heart. Like, you know, I can do this again and just, you know. And it was it was actually weird. I had teammates who were 17 and I was 24 at the time when I came back. And I graduated, when I graduated, I was 26. And like some of them were still, you know, like freshmen, 18. So it's like just sitting in the locker room, having conversations. I'm listening to those guys talking about what happened. Like they're talking about a girl or something. And I'm just like, I'm married. I'm like way, way past that. So, that was so. once we were all there at one point. Like. <laughs> yeah, they like would come up with nicknames for me, call me Pops or Grandpa or something. Like that, they call me that. I mean, some of them still call me that now. Um, oh my gosh, it was fun. That is so cool. Like I literally, like I physically just like breathe, breathe, breathe a sigh of relief <laughs> for you. Just thinking about how you got to go out to practice and play and you know you soaked up every moment of it because i'm sure for three years every moment you were there you're like i just wish i would give anything to be out there so i that is such a cool feeling i I mean not that i would know but that's that is really cool yeah it was amazing so back when i um so when i started playing again like i had injuries like my i hurt my knee i had surgery actually and um yeah i had like a stress fracture in my foot that first year back but I didn't let that, like, you know, I missed a couple of games because of that, but I played through the, like, I had the um, stress fracture in my foot, but I played through it um, till the rest of the season. Like, you know, midway through the first year back, my first year back, Coach Brandon said, you know, you can get in the boot and miss the rest of the year, or you can, you know, try and play through it. I'm like, yeah, I definitely want to play through it. Like, this is like a, you know, he's like, but he's like, well, if you do play through it, you can break your foot at any moment. I'm like, yeah, that's not a question. Like, I'm going to play. Yeah, so, like, I choose oh. option B. Okay, let's go with that. And he was like, you know, like, I'll, I'm going to try not to play you until I absolutely have to. I'm like, I'm fine with that. I'm still going to suit up and, you know, be out there. You know, he didn't he didn't really want to play me because, obviously, he didn't want me to get hurt. But, I, you know, I was not about to miss any time or anything because I had missed so much already, and I just really wanted to play, so... So, I mean, you talked a little bit already about how your perspective like really changed, but like once you were got your second chance, basically, but when, you know, that final, that chapter came to a close because you were in grad school and you were getting your master's and playing, but did you feel like once that was all over, you ultimately had your real closure? Did you feel like fulfilled? Um, yes. Well, I felt fulfilled when I stepped on the court that first year. That first game, it was great because um, my first game back was actually my first game in college. So it was against the same team at the same arena. It was, against, it was against George Mason. Oh, so wow. I remember we played that game against George Mason and we ended up losing at the very, like my freshman year in 2013, we ended up losing on like the last play or something like that. And fast forward to 2018, we beat them. And I played like 20 something minutes. And I don't think I took a shot in that game. Or maybe I took one shot in that game. But after the game, I was probably the happiest guy in the locker room because it was just like, it came full circle. Like I, you know, same same opponent, same arena. Um, so I felt like fulfilled in that moment. I was just so happy to be back. And, you know, everything else I got after that, every practice, every game was just a bonus for me. And I just was, I was I just I just had fun with it and yeah I just and so the mentality of the younger guys so like they you know they come in they're upset in the locker room like oh you know coach is making me do this coach is making me do that coach didn't play me coach played me like you know and I'm just sitting there like wow like you know back in 2013 that's really how I was as a freshman just thinking about all those things but all those things I can't really control. And that's like one of the, pers- the you know, the perspectives I have now is like, I can only worry about the things that I can control. And that's also helped me with my anxiety. It's like, I think it's worrying about things that you can't control a lot that like really hurts you. Um, and so, you know, I'm sitting in the locker room, I'm like, I can't control who coach plays. 
there's some games I come in and I have a good like two, three minutes and then he doesn't play me the rest of the game. I don't care. I know that he's doing the best. Um, well, obviously, I do care. I want to play more. But <laughs> I know whatever he's doing is not coming from a bad place. He's doing it because he wants the team to win. So he's um, what I can do as a player is work my butt off and be as ready as I possibly can. So whenever he d- does decide to call my number, I'm ready to go. You know, that's what I can control. I can control my effort. I can control how much, uh, uh, like, my mentality, like, how much I'm, I'm, like, focused and everything. I can control that. I can control the playing time. So why yeah. worry about it? It's just going to yeah. take, you know, I'm just going to go down in the dark place. And that, that was the mentality I had coming back. And that also helped me. That is such an important perspective to have as an athlete. And it's funny and it sucks because you end up, finally gaining that perspective usually towards the end of your career but it's because you you went through so much and I mean how great would it be to come in freshman year and just have that mentality of like let me just control what I can control and not get upset like no freshman year exactly what you said you get upset about every little thing because the world falls down around you if you're it doesn't go your way but it's really cool to I mean it sucks for what you had to go through to get to that perspective, but that is a really powerful perspective, and it, I'm sure now it applies to life. Your basketball college career is over now, but what are some of your goals now, and what are you working towards, and you know how have those things that you went through applied to your life now? Well, with COVID-19, um, I've not been doing a whole lot, and there's you know not a whole lot that I can do. Um, but right. Uh, in terms of what I want to do moving forward, I definitely want to work in sports. I feel like sports has given me everything, like, you know, that I have. Like, I have three degrees and, like, you know, three degrees. I'm here in the United States. Like, I, you know, I'm happy and I just want to use sports um, to impact the lives of other people. Um, also, um, specifically, I want to work in, like, college athletics, like administration, because I feel like, you know, those people work a lot behind the scenes and they... Um, they contribute a lot to like you know college sports, but like they're not really um, praised for it or anything. And that's not why I'm going into it. I'm going into it because I just want to help improve the lives of like student athletes. Um, I know that you know my situation happened. Like I was able to come back and play again because there were people in administration that you know thought highly of me and were willing to help me and the you know pushed really hard for me to come back and I was able to come back. So I just want to do something in that, in that area to help, um, to help stu- student athletes. But, you know, unfortunately right now with COVID-19, um, you know, most universities are in the hiring freeze. And so, you know, I've just been reaching out to people, trying, trying to get in touch with all my contacts and, you know, just waiting and, 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 and hoping for the best. Yeah. Well, you definitely have the right perspective and outlook on life. And I think the a common theme that I've seen so far with a lot of talking to athletes that went through like such a, like a traumatic injury or anything is like in the moment and at that time, like you're going through this stuff, it feels like it's the worst thing that could ever happen to you. But looking back now, you, you've grown from it and you use those experiences now in your real life. And it's really cool because it, it like you said, it really comes full circle And it's really inspiring to see someone take something really shitty (laughs) and turn it into something good. And so I can tell you're going to you're going to do some great work and you've already changed a lot of people's lives by sharing your story. And I know you you can you will continue to. So thank you so much. And thanks for telling my story. All right, guys, thank you so much for tuning in to my conversation with YY. I am so grateful to him for sharing his amazing story. His gratitude and positivity about life after everything he's been through is so inspiring. And I think we can all take some advice from him on focusing on what we can control, on leaning on the good people around us and finding something to be grateful for every single day. So thank you, YY, for sharing your positive perspective. And thanks to you guys for tuning in. Until next time.